Hi, good morning friends. Last time we have taken the history of the patient, ENT patient. Now we have to clinically examine the patient to come for some diagnosis and then go for investigations and final diagnosis and then the proper treatment. Now before examination we have to prepare ourselves how to examine the clinically examine the patient. Now the room should be partially dark so that we can concentrate. Then second thing is we have to be safe that is wearing the mask and we have to wear the headlight also. The headlight is most important so that we can focus the light. These are the different different types, different varieties. Yes. Now coming to the this is in the dark room, the patient and the doctor both have to be comfortable. Both should be in a comfortable position. Now this is the tongue depressor. We have to see these things. I will show you some of the instruments which are most important. Number one thing is when you are examining the ear, this is the ear speculum which has to be put in the inside the ear, focus the light and see inside. This ear speculum is to straighten the ear canal because anatomically always it is not straight. Now coming to the how to hold the tudicum nasal spicula. This has to be hold like this, put both the hands, then press it. Put it inside the nostril, open up and visualize the inside. This is the variety, the method to hold the tudicum nasal spiculum. Yes? Okay. Now, now I will show you the posterior rhinoscopy or indirect laryngoscopy. We have to hold the tongue with the gospies and we have to see this is the laryngeal mirror. With this mirror, this will be focusing on the vocal cords and piriform fossa. We have to see the posterior one third of the tongue and piriform fossa, interretinal regions, eerie epiglottic folds, supraglottic region, focal cords, focal cord movements. Now there are lot of lot many very instruments have been upgraded. Now we can visualize with 70 degree or 30 degree endoscopes or nasopharyngoscope which we can visualize very nicely and now we will go for the other examination of the ear, nose and throat. Coming to the ENT consulting chamber. The chamber has to be partially dark so that we can focus the light on the aspects of inside the ear, inside the nostril and throat because they are the deeper structures we need to focus the light. Now important thing is the comfort of doctor and the patient in sitting position so that the both will be comfortable while examination. Now coming to the attendant, one attendant to the doctor or the helper will be necessary to help the doctor so that it will be comfortable for the patient and it will be helpful for the doctor to examine the patient. Now, coming to the, the instrument are already different different instruments are necessary and a few of the medicines also that is 4% xylocaine for local anesthesia and 2% xylocaine for injectable if it is required, 2% uh, xylocaine with adrenaline if there is any bleeding so that we can pack the nostrils or we can keep a gauze piece with 2% xylocaine in the drain at the site of bleeding so that it will constrict the blood vessels and the bleeding, we can stop the bleeding. Now, to clean the ears, ear birds and cotton should be available. We will go for next slide.
coming to the examination of the neck we have to always see the neck from the front back from the sides we have to also see the neck movements and if there is any swelling and if there is any pain while movements of the neck now coming to the palpation of the neck we have to stand behind the patient and starting from the submental submandibular and jugular digestic and the jugular chain one two three groups supraclavicular area posterior triangle of the neck we have to examine for the swelling and lymph nodes and we have to specifically see the size shape of the swelling whether it is attached to the skin or the deeper structures and whether it is uh, the swelling if it is in the front whether it is moves with the swallowing movements or while the along with the tongue movements and we have to always record this clearly and so that we'll come to some of the conclusions and diagnosis now i will demonstrate you the examination of the neck examination of the neck as a whole please expose it the neck completely and from you have to examine you have to palpate the neck first of all you have to see visually and then coming to the palpation of the neck to see any swelling pain tenderness everything now we will start with any swelling or lymph nodes starting from submental submandibular jugular digastric jugular chain 1 2 and 3 supraclavicular frontal and coming to the back of the neck posterior part of the neck posterior triangle this is the posterior triangle posterior triangle of the neck and as a whole we have to see the neck the thyroid gland here the parotid gland sub mandibular salivary glands we have to see the visualize completely and record all the observations in that paper which i have shown you or you have to make any note of it whatever the observation you have seen you have to make a note of it now coming to the throat examination the i will talk with you the most important diseases and for the illnesses which the patients are going to come to us that is the usually the tonsillitis in children and that is the, we have to see for the congestion of the tonsil hypertrophy of the tonsils if there is any coating on the tonsils and to differentiate from diphtheria and staphylococcal or streptococcal infection we see the commonest is tonsillitis then also pharyngitis next thing is pharyngitis where there will be lot of patients and we have to see for the congestion of the <coughs> posterior wall of the pharynx palate uvula and the cheek mucosa now stomatitis and glossitis and abscess ulcers abscess ulcers the small ulcers very painful and they daily they change their position they heal and crop up in some other place they will be usually multiple and they will be small and they will be only mucosal deep they are not very deep but they will be this is by looking at the ulcers only one can make out that they are the abscess ulcers the commonest nasal complaints of the patients will be nasal obstruction hence we have to look for the common diseases which affects the nose first of all we have to go for the with the anterior rhinoscopy we have to see the nasal septum the commonest cause will be deviated nasal septum we call it dns then comes the allergic rhinitis where there will be hypertrophy of turbinates we have to see the 
hypertrophy of the terminates usually the inferior terminate believe and it will be completely hypertrophied and blocking the nasal passage and third thing will be if any mass growth polyp or any of the secretions they are uh, coming from the superior uh, area or from the sinuses and sinusitis is one of the commonest uh, problem where there will be post nasal discharge will be common we have to all we have to see all these in the patient and record it properly now coming to the ear examination we are all ENT surgeons in India we are famous as ear surgeons or usually they call us Kanka doctor hence we have to examine the ear thoroughly starting from the external auditory canal external features from pinna that is a congenital deformity and a deformity of the pinna lobule and shape size of pinna and coming to the external auditory canal we have to see the canal it is whether it is a straight atresia whether we can see the tympanic membrane or any other foreign bodies wax fungus anything inside the ear or any swellings granulations or polyp we have to see and we have to also see the preauricular lesion where there is a common thing is congenital preauricular sinus or any lymph node swelling and in the post auricular region sometimes there will be mastoid then the tenderness of the uh, mastoid bone and any deformities now after seeing the external auditory canal we have to see the tympanic membrane visually through the otoscope and we have to see the any changes from the normal of the tympanic membrane if there is any perforation congestion bulging polyps granulations we have to find out the things now inside the now we cannot go inside the tympanic membrane that's why we have to see the we have to examine through tuning for test that is a hearing test that is Rene's Weber's and absolute bone conduction in this Rene's is ear conduction and Weber's is bone conduction and absolute bone conduction is reference to the doctor there is a comparison between the hearing of patient and the doctor now to be specific hearing recording hearing sensitivity then we have to go for pure tone audiogram with this we can examine overall generally it is a clinical examination of the ear